We were never designed as human beings to sprint the entire marathon. We were designed to kill it and then rest. And so I was looking at this summer as an opportunity to rest, to regulate, to double down on self-care, to get more deep in my introspection, to do more layers of healing work and reprogramming work, to get closer to the fullest authentic expression of who I am, to get clarity of who I am and what I want to be spending my precious jewels, time, energy, insanity doing. Hey, I'm Brooke Jean, therapist, recovering perfectionist, and struggling working mom on a mission to normalize normal. If you're an overwhelmed, high-achieving, and secretly anxious mama struggling to balance it all and on the brink of burnout, you are in the right place. Here is where we talk about hard things like balancing work and family life, mental health, and how to navigate life-altering transitions. Nothing is too taboo here. In my conversations, I'll teach you how to let go of who you think you're supposed to be in order to create the life you've always wanted. Get ready to embrace your messy, shed the shoulds, and find freedom through a life unperfected. This is the Unperfected Pod. Hello, 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 my loves. Welcome back to the Unperfected Pod, where we normalize normal and find freedom through a life unperfected. I am about to let you all in on what has been going on with me behind the scenes, under the hood, behind the curtain, because I set some intentions for the summer that I shared with you all earlier in the year. And I wanted to loop back around and follow up with what has happened with those intentions that I set. Because Part of normalizing normal is sharing with you guys my journey, my personal growth and development, what obstacles I'm facing and working through and up against, and letting you guys be partners with me on the evolution of myself, the work, you, us, the collective, and what it is that we're trying to do together. And you guys know I am just passionate about elevating women, about helping women remove barriers to unlock their fullest expression, their fullest power and potential. I'm specifically passionate about helping moms unlock that and helping mommies with their mental health and really passionate just in general about energy, leadership, mental and emotional health and well-being. And because I'm passionate about those things, I think it's important that I am fully transparent and share with you guys where I'm at in the process of all the things, because I'm just like you. I'm only human trying to navigate this messy life and doing the best I can to heal and become and evolve and stand true in my authentic expression while also taking conscious action to allow that expression to multiply and expand. And so today is just a solo cast on what the heck has been going on with me this summer. And hopefully you'll find a little piece in my story that makes you feel less alone, that maybe resonates with you or inspires you to take aligned action. And so I'm going to be 100 with you guys. I feel like I've been going through a dark night of the soul for the past couple of years. I have really been going through it. It might not look like it on the outside because I am good at hiding it or I am good at staying focused on the bigger picture of things, but I've really been going through it in the last couple of years and specifically in the last, I think since, gosh, December of last year. My depression has really worsened and worsened and worsened. And I was doing all the things to help with my depression. So from the middle of December to the middle of May, I quit drinking. I figured out my brain health type and was eating for my brain health. I was moving. I was meditating. I was taking supplements. I am doing my own healing and therapeutic work. I am doing energy work. Like I was doing all the fucking things and feeling worse 
and worse. And while that sucks, right? That is so hard. It's also an example of how sometimes your mental health condition is just more powerful or bigger than your self-care rituals and routines. And some of us can be doing all the right things and just have a biochemical discrepancy where we need medication. So I've been off and on medication since... Gosh, I had postpartum depression with Camden 20 years ago, 19 years ago, was my first introduction to medication. So I was probably 22 at the time that I first started taking antidepressants, and I've been off and on them. And there's this cycle that many of us fall into when it comes to mental health medications where we go on them. Sometimes we try some and maybe they don't work or they don't seem to be or appear to be working or maybe we have side effects that we don't like. If we get lucky, we find the right match, the right fit, and it does start helping us. And then we stay on them. We start feeling better and we start to assume, well, shit, I don't need them anymore. I feel better. And also, look at how much healthier I am. I've been doing years of trauma healing. I understand neuroscience. I'm like doing all these biohacks every damn day. Like, I'm ready to go off these. And then I go off. And then about six months later, I realize what the medication was actually doing. You see, I think with mental health medication, we just assume or hope that the pill the medication itself will make us go from feeling depressed to amazing. That somehow this medication is going to make us happy all the time. And the truth is that's not how it works. How it works is it's a more subtle assistance. It gets you from that zero energy to maybe 10, 20, 30, or 40, or 50 percent. It gets you from that really low place of not wanting to get out of the bed for the day, but getting out of the bed or, you know, not being able to move your body or want to go exercise to being able to go walk around the block. So it gets us from this like under the baseline. And you guys can watch all of my podcast episodes on YouTube because I'm using my hands to demonstrate. And I use my hands actually a lot when I talk. But you can imagine if you're depressed, you're below a baseline of functioning. Often the medication just brings you up to functioning. But it's from that elevated place that you can then access the deeper healing, access your mental health toolkit, utilize the tools and get further benefit from the tools. You see, when you're really anxious or really depressed, sometimes the tools aren't going to freaking cut it. And that's okay. It is okay to take mental health medication. Let me say that again. It is more than okay to take mental health medication. Why are we okay taking birth control when we know that it's linked to cancer, when we know that it fucks up our endocrine and hormonal systems, but it does what we need it to do, so we're fine with all that? Why are we okay with taking heart medication? Why are we okay with taking blood thinners? Why are we okay with taking all this other stuff that does serve a biochemical purpose, yet we're so, I don't want to say resistant to, some of us are straight up resistant to, but hesitant to. Maybe that's a better approach. Why are we so hesitant to take a medication that's going to help us biochemically for our mental health, for our brains, our brains affect every single function in our bodies, yet we don't want to take medication to help it. We don't want to do breath work to help it. We don't want to do cold exposure. Like, we don't want to do these things to help support our brain, but we're so okay doing the things to help support all these other systems in our bodies. I am here to tell you, some of us need medication. Yes, we can go off it, we can go on it, we can try different things. It's all a journey. There is not one right way. There is not one medication that serves all. There is not one dose. There is not one set of tools that are going to support two people alike. 
But what I'm realizing after going through two years of fucking depression is that part of my toolkit needs to be medication. And here's why. I went back to my doctor, who I've been disclosing very openly and honestly all the things in my mental health, all the things in my physical health for the last several years, because I didn't want there to be anything left unsaid, and was telling her really where I was at. And she, of course, was like, Brooke, let's talk about getting you back on medication, which was the conversation I came in to have. So let me just say, I knew that that was the conversation we were going to have. I made the appointment with that intention. So... I am starting a new and different medication. I've never done this one before. And I've only been on it for two weeks. And I already feel completely different in terms of, not different meaning like I feel like a different person. I feel different in that I'm not in the fog and I actually feel like myself again. I'm feeling different that it's easier to get out of bed and I'm not in a brain fog all day. I feel different that I'm reconnected to my heart space. I'm not in such a negative space. I feel different because I have more energy. I feel different because I even have moments where I feel happy again. And when you suffer with depression, when you have those moments of feeling happy, which is what some people experience on their own, it feels like fucking euphoria. And that's when you know, wow, I've been really suffering. I've been really going through it. This is what it feels like to have energy, to feel more happy. Wow, why did I let myself sludge through the mud for two years? And so I know that when I go through what feels like a dark night of the soul, a hard time, I know that it is preparing me for a massive up level. And so I shared with you guys going into the summer that I was setting the intention to downshift for summertime. I was going to work less. I was going to meditate more. I was going to spend more quality time with my daughter. I was not focusing on the growth or expansion of the business. I was focused on strengthening what we're already doing taking amazing care of our clients, continuing to do epic work, but not trying to invite more in, not engaging in any sort of hustle or grind or strategic planning or growth, none of that bullshit. I was intentionally decluttering my schedule so I could really allow the space for my self-care and to be connected to my daughter and to be connected to nature because I knew, you know, the universe was forcing that slowdown because my daughter did not get into a summer program. The universe was forcing that slowdown so I was going to trust and free fall into that slowdown knowing that it was probably on purpose and intentional. You see, we were never designed as human beings to sprint the entire marathon. We were designed to kill it and then rest, to kill it and then rest. And so I was looking at this summer as an opportunity to rest, to regulate, to double down on self-care, to get more deep in my introspection, to do more layers of healing work and reprogramming work, to get closer to the fullest authentic expression of who I am, to remember those depths of who I am, to get clarity of who I am and what I want to be spending my precious jewels, time, energy, insanity doing. And it's in those spaces and places that I tend to download the clarity of what's next for me. And I am happy to update you all that that is exactly what's happening. Now, the summer has been a struggle. It hasn't been all fun. It hasn't been all pleasure. It's been hard. Me and my husband are always with child or at work. There has not been as much free time or self-care time as I would have liked. There has been not a lot of time for us to connect It's a grind. We're exhausted. But I will never regret having spent that time with my daughter. I will never regret having slowed down. Like, I don't regret a thing, but I'm just saying it hasn't been all roses. It's been hard. But I have really deep dived into my trust and my faith that it is all unfolding in exactly the right time that it is supposed to. Because I come from that energy. I believe that wholeheartedly. 
And so even in the dark night, even in the hard days of the summer, even in the anxiety and urgency that would bubble up of like, what do you mean you're not growing? What do you mean you're not going balls to the wall? Like, that's not who you are, Brooke. Like, are things passing you by? Like, I am only human and I am a driven individual and I am a go-getter and I have big fucking goals and a big purpose and passion and mission and vision to uphold. However, if I set the intention to slow down, I'm going to stick to that intention because that's my integrity, but that doesn't mean that I'm not void of those tendencies, those old patterns of perfectionism that say, what do you mean you're slowing down? And what I had to do was remind myself over and over and over again, now's not the time for that. Now's not the time. Yes, I feel an urge to go get. Now is the time to rest. And in doing that, I've been percolating and brewing and releasing and reprogramming. And here's where it became clear to me that I need to get back on medication, that I cannot shine as bright as I am when I am bogged down with depression, that I don't have to keep clawing and fighting through the mud, that I deserve to let the help in so I can then have the energy and the clarity to rise into my fullest potential and expression, and that I can model that transformation and lead the way for you all to know that it is safe and okay for you to do that should this be part of your journey as well, okay? And in that, the second that I said yes to allowing that help in, I started coming into contact with certain people, places, and things, and doors began to open, and ideas began to flow, and suddenly it is all flooding in, my loves. We are about to up-level massively in our frequency and also in the brand. So I'm here to tell you that, you know, this mission of Unperfected and helping people let go of who they think they're supposed to be in order to become who they are, and this passion project around Mommy's Mental Mental health is expanding and elevating. The brand is growing. The brand is expanding. The brand is elevating. You see, I am passionate about energy. I am passionate about mental health and psychology and neuroscience. And I am passionate about leadership because I believe that leadership and moms are leaders. Moms are leaders of their homes, whether they work inside the home or outside the home. Moms also make the best leaders outside of the home. It is the vehicle of leadership that we are going to level up collectively and we are going to drive real and sustainable change in the way that we work, in the way that we are, and in how we feel. And so while I have this beautiful brand of Unperfected, I'm not married to staying stuck in anything because I'm constantly growing and evolving. And what I realized is that my depression was keeping me stuck in that specific brand when my energy is always wanting to grow. I'm a seven on the Enneagram, which is the enthusiast, which means I am a multi-passionate person. I do get easily bored. I have a lot of ideas and I have squirrel level attention span. And so the brand is growing, my loves. And while we will still be doing counseling, we will still be doing a lot of the beautiful things that we are known for and trusted around, I want you to know that you can expect some really big, beautiful things being birthed in the third and fourth quarter of this year. I'm not going to share them yet because they are not fully, uh, they have not fully crystallized but they are flooding in and I am getting them down on paper and I am really committed to aligning with the frequency that is going to help me bring something really of the highest good for all into the world. And it will be around energy and leadership and mental health, but it will just feel bigger and different. And I am so freaking excited about that. I cannot believe what has unlocked and opened up for me in the last two weeks since getting on medication and being even more intentional about my energy and taking care of myself and aligning with the frequency of passion, of love, of pleasure, of playfulness. You know, my three core values are purpose, pleasure, and playfulness. And I forgot 
how to be in the frequency of that when I was bogged down by my depression. So you see, this is where mental health intersects with energy. You don't, it's not one or the other. You don't disqualify yourself from the energetic quantum field of infinite possibilities because of mental health. You are a participant and deserving of and worthy of all that is infinite just by being born. And yes, sometimes our mental health pivots us and pulls us in different directions and we'll have to make conscious choices to help ourselves along the way. But that's no different than if you had a heart condition or a troubling relationship that you're navigating through or a loss in your family or whatever it is. Mental health is just one of the things that we navigate in the human experience, but it does not disqualify us. Just because I suffer depression doesn't mean I don't have a high frequency, but will I do things to help myself? Absolutely. Will I expect to always stay in a frequency of happiness and bliss and pure passion? No, that's not realistic for human expression. We dab into that and then we get pulled into our fears and our anxieties and our humanistic tendencies and that might be mental health issues it might be other things but we have the awareness now of when we've fallen off when we've gotten sucked into that and we take action to help ourselves come back into the higher frequency and it's the coming back to that builds the muscle that i think creates sustainable big success Nobody just wakes up and is born into it in terms of like the action, the resilience that's required for long-term success. We are born into the brilliance of what's possible, but we have to go through the hard things to know what we're made of. We have to go through the hard things to build that resilience, to build that knowing of our inner strength and our gifts, what I call our gems. We have to go through these initiations to then up level. We have to go through the dark night of the soul to then massively up level, which is exactly what I'm going through right now. It just so happens that at the same time as I'm going through it energetically, I'm going through it mental and emotionally. And to me, that's not a coinky dink. It is one in the same. I just slapped my <laughs> microphone. I don't know if you heard that or felt that, but it was a passionate slap, not an anger slap, I promise you. So my friends, like whether it is mental health, whether it is energy, whether it is leadership, they are all one and the same. It's all about consciousness. It's all about regulating our nervous system so we can align with the frequencies, so we can let the information flow through us, so we can then go and take that information that's coming through us out into the world and build and create things that actually help the greater good of all. You see what I'm saying? I hope you can see or feel the smile on my face as I'm saying this because I am lit the fuck up around this right now. You see, I've been told you have to choose a lane. You have to choose mental health or energy or don't go down the spiritual path with mental health or, you know, leadership doesn't intersect with in leadership. Don't be talking about mental health. I'm calling bullshit on all that. That is the old paradigm. Those are illusions. Those are ways to box us up and create control. And I don't play by those rules. I believe that more is possible. I believe that those all intersect. Of course they do. And I believe there needs to be space for mental health discussions in leadership rooms. You are missing out. If you are a leader or you own a company and you're not looking at mental and emotional health of your team, you are not going to be part of this new co-creation. People are not going to be attracted to your business. People are not going to want to come and work for you and stay with you. This is part of the conversation, my love. Let's get with the program. I will be educating businesses on mental and emotional health because when we are regulated in our mental and emotional health and well-being, we can tap into our deepest source of creativity, our deepest source of brilliance, deeper levels of our brain, our intuition, our, our spiritual guidance and all the things. And it's from that place that we need to be operating not the other way around. And so this inside out model is really lighting me up. And what I realize it's what I've been coaching and teaching and mentoring and training and guiding people to do all along. I just didn't have a framework for it or the vocabulary for it. And I'm still working on creating that. And I'm going to be patient 
with the evolution of that because it's flowing through me every day. And each day I get a piece of clarity around what this is and how it's going to serve and how I can offer it and get it out into the world. But the first thing is to acknowledge that I was going through the dark night of the soul to give myself resources and support that I need to help myself through it, to realign energetically, to get back to the things that help me feel good, to trust in myself, and then to allow the creation to flow through and to break free of all the old patterns, beliefs, thoughts, infrastructures that I think are holding us back from bigger expression, bigger potential, bigger creation. And my hope is that in embodying this with you all, it inspires you to do the same. So where in your life can you think out of the box that you've been put in, right? Motherhood gets to look the way that we create it. Relationships get to look the way that we create them. The old traditional stuff is not what most people are doing anymore. And that's not to knock on traditional stuff. I'm just saying Marriage and unionship and partnership has evolved too. The way that we're working is evolving. So think about your role at work. Where can you expand? What's possible for you? In your business, where can you expand? What's possible for you? And let's stop playing by the old rules that says pick a lane, pick a niche, pick a little, little, little. Here's your protocol to success. Bull honky. Yeah. There isn't a protocol. We are currently creating an up-leveled way, which is not the only way, by the way. There is infinite possibilities. So I'm feeling so much more like myself right now, mamas and my loves. And I do want to open up this podcast to not just moms, because even though you, mama, are my, we're always going to be my passion project, because I understand the struggle of juggling motherhood and having big career goals. So I'm never going to not talk about that. I'm never not going to support you or be passionate about that, but I am going to open it up because I can't tell you how many people have been hitting me up in the last couple of months saying, Brooke, I'm not a mom, but I've been listening to your podcast and it's really resonating with me. It's really helping me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So share this podcast with anybody who's interested in mental and emotional health and well-being, leadership, energy work, any person in your life that you want to lift up, share it with them because we can take what resonates and we can leave the rest, can't we? And really the purpose is to serve the highest good, to help as many people as we can because each person that decides to take their mental health seriously and get support is a massive miracle in my mind. Each person that breathes today instead of you know, self deprecates massive miracle. Each person that feels less alone and more connected, massive miracle. And I am wanting to amplify those ways of helping ways of being and massive miracles across the globe. So share it with anybody who you think would benefit. And I'll still speak directly to you, mama. Don't you worry. Cause You are me and I am you and we're having this experience together of juggling all these things and we have to talk about it and be playful with it and laugh about it and I will continue to share tools and tricks and techniques and experts and storytelling with you all the same. But I do want to open it up for anybody who would benefit from the mental health discussion or the leadership or the energy discussion. So that is what I've been going through lately, okay? And in these last couple of weeks that I have become medicated for my mental health, I have aligned my energy with the frequency of the things that matter most to me, which is purpose, pleasure, and playfulness. I have gotten even more clarity on who I am and what matters most to me and what feels good to me. And in the grounding of all of that has created an opening for ideas and direction for what's next in the business to come through. And I am so excited to continue 
to share that with you guys, to let you in. I would love to hear from you if this is resonating, if you're going through a dark night of the soul or if you're coming out of it, what is flowing through for you? What are we co-creating together? Please share those things in the Mommy's Mental Health Matters Facebook group or on Instagram and tag me. I would love to hear where you guys are at because I truly believe if I'm showing up today and sharing this message with you, there's several of you, not all of you, but there's several of you that this genuinely resonates with. And you're on the same frequency as me. And so you're going through this similar experiences. And I, I want to hear from you what that's been like for you. And share your struggles and share your successes. And let's continue to support each other on this journey of healing, becoming, and thriving. Because that is really what it's all about. That's all I have today for you, my love. I hope that you are open to my truth and my vulnerability. And I appreciate the container and the space to be able to speak my truth and be vulnerable and be honest about my mental health journey, my entrepreneurship journey, my motherhood journey and all the things. Nothing is too taboo here. We need to start speaking in spaces about real life shit. No more holding our grief in. No more lying about how we're really doing. No more allowing things to hold us back from our truest expression and potential. None of that. The more we talk about these things, the more we normalize normal, we remove shame and we transform individually and collectively. So I will always speak truth, even if it's hard to hear, hard to say, unpopular, triggering, whatever it is, because I hope that me speaking my truth inspires you to speak yours and to know that you are not alone, man. We are all embracing our messy. So I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and take care of yourselves and therefore each other. And I will see you same time, same place next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Unperfected Pod. I hope this episode helped you feel a little less alone and a little more inspired to be you. If you like what we're doing here, I would so appreciate that you subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. If you do, share the episode on Instagram and tag me at Brooke Jean Unperfected to enter to win a one-to-one -one laser coaching session. Also, feel free to join me in my private Facebook community, Mommy's Mental Health Matters, where we continue the conversation. Thanks again for being here and see you in next week's episode.